Hello everyone and welcome. We're here in Yeshivat Chush Shel Chesed under the guidance of Rabbi Shalom Arish and we continue to learn, to listen to the stories of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. This is the second story, the story titled The King and the Emperor. We're holding in the middle of the story where the merchant's son brings home tons of merchandise, tons of goods. He wanted to show his father that he was successful. And on his travels, he found a woman. And he said, I'm coming home to my father. I have a wife. I have goods. I have money. I have livelihood. My father is going to be so proud of me. And before, before they got close to shore, they all drank a little l'chaim. And all the sailors got tipsy. And they all left the ship. While... The merchant's son went to go gather his family to come see everything that he brought. We're holding by this line right here where she unfurled the sails and sailed the ship. She ran away. She ran away from this guy because she was he was not her match. He was not her real soulmate. She had to go through an encounter with him. There are good valuable lessons that she's able to get out of this relationship but it's not for her she had to run away in this manner so we continue when the merchant's family arrived at the dock they didn't find anything the 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 the, the merchant which was this uh, son's father was furious at his son believe me cried the son i brought home a ship for, with goods but all they could see is the empty ocean. Ask the sailors, he said. He went to go and try to find the sailors, but they're all laying there drunk. When they woke up, he asked them. They had no idea. But they said, yeah, we did come with a fully laden ship, but now we have no clue what happened. We don't know what happened to us. We don't know where the boat is. The father got furious at his son. And he banished him from his house. He told him that he never wanted to see him again. The son left his father and became a wanderer. Fortunately, this is how the father dealt with this crisis. Meanwhile, the emperor daughter, the emperor's daughter was sailing at sea. She's back at the sea. We mentioned once, we'll mention again, that the sea represents spirituality. Water is something that cleanses us. She didn't have her soulmate, but she wanted to hold on to something spiritual represented by the sea. Sea represents Emuna. At the same time, there was a king who had built his palace near the sea. He felt that this was the best place to build a palace because of the sea breezes and the ships that passed by. It's a beautiful place. When the emperor's daughter sailed the sea, she approached this king's palace. The king looked and saw what appeared to be a ship. But it did not look like there was any sailors or passengers. He said, am I seeing something? If you remember correctly, the, the merchant's son, he also he, he saw a reflection of, of a girl in the water. He said, am I seeing correctly? So here now it's the opposite. Now the, now the, the, the king sitting in his palace, he's looking at the water, looking at the beautiful scenery that Hashem created and he sees a boat passing by it's sailing the sails are up everything's working properly but there's no sailors and there's no passengers on the deck he told his men to look but they saw the same thing as the emperor's daughter came closer to the palace she said I don't really need anything to do with this palace but when she tried to pull away the king sent his men and made her come back she realized that she's only going to get in trouble if she's continuing to get involved with different relationships and the first time with the merchant's son she went willingly but this time she realized that she should be a little bit more careful with herself so she doesn't have to get into any relationships with people that she should not be getting into this king was not married it was a type of guy he couldn't make up his mind. Whenever he wanted a woman, she said no. And when he finally said no to a woman, she said she does want to marry him. And then it broke off.
When the emperor's daughter arrived, she demanded that he swear not to touch her until they were legally married. Again, here she, last time, he, last time she told him to promise. Here she's a little bit more skeptical about this guy, and she said, "Make an oath," and he did. She then said, "It will be, it would not be proper for him to open her ship or even touch it." Rather, he must remain untouched on the sea until the wedding. Then everyone will see the vast amount of goods that I brought with me. The people will not say that the king had taken a woman from the street. The king also promised all of this. The king wrote to all the nations, inviting them to his wedding. He also built palaces for her. The emperor's daughter demanded that she be given 11 noblewomen to accompany her. The king issued an order and sent the eleven daughters of the greatest nobles, building a special palace for each and every one. The emperor's daughter also had her own special palace where they all came together. The woman played musical instruments and they also played games with her. One day she told the other woman that she would like to go down to the sea with them. They went with her and they played games there too. She then offered to serve them some very excellent wine. Uh-oh. She gave them from the wine. The woman became so drunk that they fell asleep and lay there, almost like the, the, the sailors. She then untied the ship, spread the sails, and fled with the ship. She'd been taken against her will. She did not want to marry this guy, but she saw that this guy was going to be all over her, but she had to run away. The king and the men discovered that the ship was missing. He became very anxious. He didn't really know that it was the, the fiancé, the emperor's daughter, that took the ship herself. He said, uh-oh, let's not tell her so suddenly. She'll become very upset because of this precious ship. She almost might think that I gave the ship to somebody else. Therefore, send one of the noblewomen to her in a subtle way. They went to the chamber of the first of the eleven special ladies and didn't find anyone there. In the second, they went to all the eleven palaces and chambers. They didn't find anyone. Finally, they agreed to send an elderly noblewoman at night to tell her. They all went to the chamber of the emperor's daughter and did not find anyone. They were very alarmed. Meanwhile, the father of these noblemen were accustomed to getting letters from their daughters. They usually sent letters back and forth, but now they saw that they were sending letters to their daughters and not getting any replies. They started to get furious. And they said, we have to do something about it. Let's get rid of the king. But they said, hey, it's not really his fault. Let's instead decide to impeach him and have him exiled. So they did so. Thus the king went on his way. Meanwhile, let's continue just a little bit more. Meanwhile, the emperor's daughter sailed away on her ship. When the noble women woke up, they continued playing as if all normal. They thought they were still near home. Finally, they said to her, let's go home. Let's go, let's go off of the ship. She said, no, let's stay here a while longer. All of a sudden, oh, another wave. Let's go home, they insisted. She said, I'm sorry. We already left the port. Why did you do this to us? They demanded. She answered them that she was afraid that the ship would break up in the storm. Her only choice was to untie it and spread sail. So they dealt with the situation. They continued to sail at sea, played their musical instruments. Once they came across a palace and the lady said, let's go close to there. The emperor's daughter, again, she didn't want to get close. So last time she got close here, she even decided to stay away. She said that she still regretted that she came close to the palace of the king who tried to marry her. Then they sighted an island and drew near to it. There were 12 pirates on the island and they wanted to kill the woman. So we have 12 pirates and 12 ladies to be continued. Hopefully we'll be able to wake up our soul. The story will be able to wake up our soul to be able to realize that no matter where we go into the darkest of places, Hashem is always there. There's always... There's always advice. There's always something to hold on to. May Hashem help us in the merit of learning and listening to the stories of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov to be 
awake and aware and to know what Hashem wants from us in this troubling times and help us to be able to take the advice of our leaders and the leaders should have the clarity to give us the right advice that everybody needs to hear. Amen. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.